Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. I actually had a entirely different video filmed for today, but over the past 48 hours, so many of you guys have reached out to me with your concerns over the Skin Aqua UV Super Gel SPF and some recent testing and developments that have gone on with that product. I know so many of you use that product in your day-to-day -day skincare routine because of the gorgeous drugstore and affordable price point and the really great way that it applies on the skin. However, there have been some recent developments which I want to sit down and share my thoughts and feelings with you guys. As with a lot of things in um, skincare, it's not as clear cut as it might seem. And there's some things that we do need to discuss. So sit back, relax, and let's unpick everything related to skin aqua. As most of you are aware, over the past 18 months, there's been a whole host of issues relating to sunscreens and brands advertising an SPF protection factor, which then wasn't delivered under independent testing. Whilst this is primarily focused on the Korean sunscreen market, it's not an issue which is just associated with Korea. And we've seen in the past and with ongoing testing that this is an issue which can also be prevalent in North America, here in Europe, and also some other Asian markets. This has led a lot of people to really start to question the products that you're using and really search for those tried, tested, and verified sunscreens, which are gonna give you the do the job and give you the protection that you want. I have always said there is no more important step in your skincare routine than your sun protection. It was what protects us against burning, against cancers, against cellular damage, and of course, aging. I think it's really important that you have full faith and trust in the product um, that you're using, which is why I know there's so much sensitivity and panic when testing does come out, which shows it might not be living up to your expectations. When it comes to the Skin Aqua UV Super Gel Sunscreen, things aren't quite as clear as what they might see when you read some of these articles talking about the recent testing. There are multiple ways that you can test the efficacy and the SPF value of a sun care product. I'm actually going to leave a link to Lab Muffin Beauty Science in a video she recently did on her channel below because she goes into it in much more scientific detail than I possibly could. But traditionally what we've done is applied a pre-measured amount of a product to human skin, exposed that to UV light and then measured the impact and the effect that it has. This gives us a broad range of potential SPF values but if you repeat that test a number of times, you can then average it out to give a rough guide to the true SPF of that product. This is the standard test used across the world, but isn't the only one out there. This recent test, which was done on the Skin Aqua product, which showed it fell far below the SPF 50 plus, which the brand was advertising, wasn't done in that traditional way. It was actually done using a spectrophotometry test, which is entirely different. This doesn't rely on you applying the product onto human skin, but rather taking the um, product and applying light through it and measuring the light intensity, which makes it through the product. This in theory gives you an SPF value because you can measure the intensity of light that's allowed to permeate the product, which is ultimately what it's doing to our skin. It's preventing that UV radiation from hitting our skin and causing damage. This, however, isn't as widely understood, tested, and established as some of the other forms of SPF testing, and which is why I think a lot of people out there tend to say it should be taken with a little bit of a grain of salt because it's still in its infancy in terms of SPF technology. Now, I'm not an expert in terms of SPF, and I'm not a cosmetic formulator, so I'm really coming at it in the same angle that you guys are, as skincare enthusiasts that just want to protect our skin, but also have products which are exciting to use that we look forward to applying, but are going to be giving us that locked in sun protection. So I did a whole host of research over the past couple of days, read so many different sources to really get to the bottom of this. I just wanted to sit and share my feelings towards this specific product. Now, I'm going to stress that this is just my thoughts and feelings on this, and I'm going to be leaving links to the sources and things used below so you can check them out for yourself. I'm going to stress again, it's so, so important that you're applying a product in terms of your sunscreen, which you have full faith and trust in, but you're also taking other measures, including applying it properly and liberally enough, but also so, you know, staying out of the sun when it's at its most intense and doing things like taste seeking shade, covering up where possible and doing some other things rather than just relying on the SPF to be the sole thing which is going to protect you against UV damage. Like I said, these are just my thoughts and feelings, but I wanted to sit down and share them with you and I'd welcome you to share any comments, thoughts or feelings below um, so we can kind of get the conversation going. First of all, having read through a lot of the scientific background to this specific test, I realise it is really in its infancy. Whilst we have always reached for um, testing which applies product to human skin and measures it, this is a very different way of approaching it. I'm not going to say which is right and wrong, but just from what I've read, this is a little less understood in terms of um, the outcomes and 
how it actually measures the SPF value of some of the more traditional tests. Also, it seems like we're kind of comparing apples and oranges because if most tests are done on human skin and we're seeing, oh, this SPF is 30 versus this one that came out as 44 or whatever, you're comparing like for like. With this um, test, which showed the skin aqua to be far below the SPF of 50 plus advertised, you're actually comparing something that's totally different to some other measures out there. I did some digging as to some other SPF testing which has been done on the Skin Aqua product range and actually when it's done in collaboration with Human Skin and that test is measured, the um, outcomes have been much more favourable. So there's two studies, both of which I'm going to link below. The first one measured under standard testing the amount of SPF protection given from one of the Skin Aqua products and it was measured at 44.5. Now okay, that isn't the SPF 50 plus which is advertised by the brand so we definitely need to call that out but it's certainly not the the SPF 20, which some people are worried that this product might actually be delivering. There was another test done out of Hong Kong, which confirmed very similar things, which showed that it was in a range of 44 to 48. Again, not quite the SPF 50 plus, which was being advertised by the brand, but certainly not super low and at risk to our health and well-being. So the way we take that and we look at those testing, which are the more established and traditional styles of testing, it shows this product to be much more favorable when we compare it to some other ones, which have been through testing. Also, when you take the Skin Aqua range of products, they use multiple different filters. We always look back to like for Purito and some of the other Korean sunscreen scandals which have gone before. The issue with those products wasn't necessarily the filters used, but the concentrations of them and the fact that they use just one or two filters rather than a range which is going to give a broad spectrum protection. A lot of professionals and experts speak really highly of the number of um, filters which are used in the Skin Aqua range, including um, some YouTube dermatologists such as Dr. Dre. Now, if you've ever seen Dr. Dre's content, you know she is fully, fully immersed in the sunscreen industry and prioritizes sun protection above all else. She speaks very highly of this product and the filters used. Now, that isn't a hard and fast rule as to um, saying that it's got that guaranteed protection. But again, I think when experts are talking favorably around the ingredients and um, the number of filters used, that can give us some confidence. Ultimately, when it comes to the product, um, if I look just from a layman's perspective, if you apply a product to a range of skin tones, types and environments and you measure that, I feel that that's going to give a more accurate reflection of the true SPF and how it interacts with our bodies than just taking a product, shining light through it and measuring that. That's because all of our skin is unique. It's part of what makes us fabulous and unique. And so you look at our individual skin types, tones and the environments that we live in and all our skin reacts differently to different products. And so I think it makes sense to apply a product onto a range of skin types and tones and measure the average to then determine an SPF. And so we we as consumers know how that product is going to work on our individual skin, if that makes sense. Whilst I'm not berating the um, spectrophotometry testing, I don't know enough about it to really say whether it's reliable or not. It's definitely in its infancy and something which is being studied in more detail. It might become the test, the go-to test for SPF, but I don't think we're at that stage yet. Overall, when it comes to this product, I think we have to leave it to our own individual um, requirements when we work out whether we're going to continue to use it. This isn't a product I've used time and time again. I tried it. I enjoyed it. I loved how it felt on the skin, though I did feel it gave a slightly streaky application, which is why I didn't reach for it time and time again. That gorgeous price point and the lovely velvety feel it left on the skin is why a lot of people are attracted to it. And I would say you have to ask yourself, what do you need from your sunscreen? If we're comparing like for like and using the um, human testing to work out what the true SPF is, an SPF of 44 to 48, whilst below the SPF 50 plus advertised, it's still a great SPF when you compare it to some other testing which has been done and will still give really good protection for the skin. However, if you're looking for something which has that locked in guaranteed SPF 50 plus, that actually covered some independent testing which has been done on some recent sunscreens. I'm going to leave a link to that video up there because there's some great SPF 50 plus options in that video that you can reach for. Here in the UK, we don't have a very high UV index on the average day and so reaching for a 50 plus SPF isn't essential in sort of my skin tone. I have no underlying medical conditions. And I don't expose my skin to high UV intensity. However, if those things are different wherever you are, you have to take a different approach. And I would always say do what's right for you and make sure that you have full trust and confidence in the product that you're using. I hope this kind of helps to clear everything up. I'm sorry that I can't give you like a yes or a no answer to this. I think it comes from the fact that as a skincare enthusiast like you guys, 
we're kind of exploring everything that's going on in the market at the moment and ultimately we just have to do what's right for us and right for our unique skin conditions so hopefully this has given you a little bit of perspective and you can maybe um, make a more informed decision if you're using this product and whether you want to continue to use it i would love to know your thoughts and feelings so please share it in the comments below this video took a whole lot of research so if you do have time to give it a like obviously it would help the channel and i really really appreciate it i've left links to all of the um, sources that i've linked below so you can check them out if you do want a little bit more detail and wherever you are in the world guys sending lots and lots of love take care bye